The key features, and again, I'm not going to steal from the demo, but just as a high-level overview, the LIFO and FIFO that we have been begging into it for for years is built into this product, designed to work perfectly well within the product. Your clients can finally enjoy LIFO and FIFO. Multi-location inventory tracking is supported, barcoding, order management on both the purchase and sales order side with full back order tracking. POS is a component of Fishbowl. Pick, pack, and ship, drop shipping, RMA, and drop shipping are both relatively new to Fishbowl. I mean, not, let's put it this way, they've been enhanced in Fishbowl. Let's put it that way with the latest version. Serial number tracking, lot number tracking, expiration date tracking, revision tracking, those have been in the core product for years. And those are four of the strongest elements of Fishbowl uh, because, and again, I'm not going to steal a thunder from the technical demo, but when you're going through the technical demo, if you could focus on what I call a floating field, a field that, that isn't part of the core item setup, but as you receive each individual widget, you can slap this piece of information on it without actually changing the way that that product code is set up in Fishbowl. You can slap a serial number on it, you can have one item code and have a thousand serial numbers. You can have one product code, have, a, have, have 10 or 15 revision levels. I mean, you could have unlimited, but that's not practical. Um, expiration dates are, are pro not, they're not item by item, they're product by product. So if this bag of Wheaties is going to expire in two months and the next bag of Wheaties is going to expire in 10 months, each bag of Wheaties gets its own exp expiration date while it shares a single product code. Now that's revolutionary. That's something that, that's, that's completely foreign to the way items are set up in QuickBooks and that'd be a great thing to emphasize in the demo if you can get the chance to do that. Uh, kitting, light manufacturing, again that word light because I think you're being conservative, bills of material, uh, and ve various levels of bills of material where you can have a simple bill of materials, you can have a variable bills of material uh, where you can do substitutions. One of the big pain points in QuickBooks that your folks will experience if they can use the bill of materials, which are still very rudimentary, they don't include unit of measure conversions at the assembly level in QuickBooks, so when they say, I want a more powerful bill of material system or manufacturing system, what does Fishbill offer me? It, uh, one of the many things it offers, in include, in, 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 include, including the ability to track different units of measure at the assembly level, it is the variable bills of material, where if, you're gonna, if you build a bicycle one way, but like 10% of the time they want it with a different, different set of handlebars, you don't have to create an entirely new bill of materials. You can accommodate the special orders by simply removing one handle set, dragging another handle set into the bill of materials and manufacturing it. You can't do that in QuickBooks. Your bill of materials is set in stone and if you change it, you're changing it globally across that entire product. So to accommodate one special order, you have to set up a whole new bill of materials. Okay, with Fishbowl, you don't. The work orders, you might say, well, in, in QuickBooks, I can use estimates as work orders. Yeah, that's a workaround, can be effective at the lower level. Work orders in Fishbowl are designed as a warehouse floor document that tracks what's happening at the manufacturing or kitting process and allows you to assign revision levels. So that when, you, when you modify a product on a work order, maybe sometimes a work order like my cell phone company is a repair work order, sometimes a work order is a build work order, but when it's a repair work order or modification work order where you're taking uh, I, you know, wholesale widget A, wholesale widget B and doing some sort of a custom build by combining the two pieces into a, a unique part, all of that can be tracked at revision levels. So when those phones come through, the re it has revision level A as in the condition received from the customer. Revision level B, C, D would be the various ways that I change that part on a work order as I, and, and then labor. You can, whenever that product comes out of the work order phase, it's burdened with labor, it's burdened with any parts that have been added to the phone or used to repair the phone and any other overhead burdens you want to make and then a revision level is slapped on it. Now that's of course, at the most complex level. Do you want to use a work order in the same way you would use an estimate workaround in QuickBooks as just a way of saying these products are on the floor being kitted? I've got a client that just does kitting. So they don't use revision levels and all the other goodies. But it's good to know that this is more than just a document. It's a control process for your floor.